Hello, everybody, and welcome to our panel today with all of our wonderful University of California representatives. So before I hand things over to the panelists to start talking with you all, a couple housekeeping notes before we get started. First and foremost, we have other sessions and fairs going on as part of our uh, virtual uh, fair that's happening in Virginia. So if you're interested in signing up for more sessions, please visit strivescan.com slash Virginia. That's also where you can find recordings of all of these presentations. So if there are any that you missed or you'd like to relive again, you can find those recordings there. As a reminder, your camera and microphone are also going to be off for the duration of the panel, but we would really love to hear your questions. So if there's something that you would like to know, please utilize the Q&A button, and that will let our panelists know that there's something that you'd like to know about. You can put any questions that you have in the Q&A throughout the duration of the panel. You don't have to wait to the very, very end, um, so please stick those on in there. That way they can help you out. Without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to your wonderful panelists. All right, thank you so much. Let me go ahead and share my screen really quickly and we will get started. All right, everyone, hello and welcome to the VACRO presentation on sharing your story on the UC application. So my name is Jua Howard and I'm an assistant director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at the University of California, Berkeley. And I also am joined today by three of my colleagues that will introduce themselves as they present portions of the sessions today. So for those of you who may not know, the actual University of California system consists of nine phenomenal undergraduate campuses that you see reflected here on this slide. And we're located throughout the state, as you can see, and each of us have something very different to offer you as students. Um, we range in the different academic programs, the size and setting of our campuses, um, just a general overall vibe. So we always encourage you to do a little bit of research on all of us, and you will learn a little bit more about all of us, some of us today in detail. Um, but really, no matter which campus that you guys decide to apply to and ultimately choose, you'll find a culture of academic excellence and fellow students and faculty who will definitely inspire you every single day. All right. And so today, after we review some information about the actual UC application, you will hear about four of our beautiful campuses, and that'll be Berkeley, Davis, Irvine, and Santa Cruz. Okay. And so... While again, each of our campuses are a little bit different as different as I mentioned, we do share some valuable things that really help you all as an applicant to our one of our to our campuses. And so one of those main things is the actual UC application. And so today we're going to give you some tips on how to tell your story best possible in the application in order to really highlight who you are as a person and really give us your backstory. Let us get a chance, like a glimpse into your life and let us know what you will contribute to one of our respective campuses. Um, and so, and definitely for out of state, we definitely wanna be able to give you that extra, that time and that those opportunities, some tips to really better tell your story where a lot of times in state, students may have a different insight or different perspective. So it's very important that you know how to best again, effectively utilize and move through the actual UC application. Okay. And so first and foremost, the UC application process as a whole has a very different timeline than most other colleges. Um, for instance, where we don't, where we don't use the Common App, uh, we don't use the Universal App, or the Coalition App. Again, we have our own application, which is the UC application. And again, all nine of our campuses share the one application. So as students, you guys will share your kind of one set of information and then check off which particular UC campus that you are interested in applying to. And then of course, that information will be shared with those respective campuses. For students, you all will pay, will pay an application fee per campus. So that is important to note. So if you're choosing, let's say all four of us today to apply to, you will pay an application fee per campus for all four campuses. Um, however, we do offer fee waivers. And while you're filling out the actual application, you can qualify for a fee waiver. If you do qualify for a fee waiver, you can apply up to four campuses for free. All right, so that's important to note. If you don't qualify for a fee waiver through the application, but you may have received one through maybe College Board or another organization, you can select to send in a check when you're prompted for payment and send in those documents to support your request for a fee waiver, okay? Now, the application typically goes live at the beginning of August, 
And though you can work on it starting on August 1st, you cannot submit it until starting November 1st, which is quickly approaching. And then the month of November is your filing period. And it doesn't matter when you apply within that month, as long as you meet the deadline of November 30th. November 30th is just our one regular application deadline. We don't offer an early decision, no early action, nothing binding, and no rolling admissions, just the one deadline of November 30th. And so for the actual application, one thing that we want to highlight, a lot of out-of-state students a lot of times will ask us questions about how to best enter your courses um, in the actual kind of academic history portion of our application. So as you see here, you're gonna select your particular curriculum. Um, you're gonna tell us, you know, the date that you've attended the particular high school, but then you see what is the school's grading system? This is a lot of times where we get questions about kind of how to fill this out. So let's say you are a student where you are, your grading system is a, is, is a letter grade. So A, B, C, D, and, or F, but you may have had a couple of semesters where you had pass, no pass grades or, or grading scale. What you need to do is actually select both. All right, so you'll select, you know, A through F and you'll also select other. And then in addition to other, then you'll put like you see credit slash no credit. So you can can select more than one option, and that's very important. It's a little confusing when you're reading this, so know that you can do that. In addition, you can choose more than one school term, all right, system. So if you have, let's say, most of high school and you're only receiving one grade, maybe for one course for the full year, but maybe you had, you know, a couple of classes that were just for a semester, you can, you can pick a single year, one full year, as you see, and then also pick a semester, all right? So that's important to note. Again, you can select more than one grading system and more than one school term. Now, in addition, it's very important that when you're filling this out, you are, man you are manually entering your information. This is self-reported information. So it's always important maybe to have your transcript in front of you as you're working through this process. And so you're going to list your courses in the application as they appear on your transcript. If your course is per se an honors course, you're going to select the drop down and select honors honors level, or if it's IB, International Baccalaureate, IB. So you wanna make sure that it is very much mimics and reflects what it will be on your transcript. So that's very important to note. In addition, AP courses, IB courses, and also college level, which you don't see here, will receive an additional point when we're recalculating your GPA to come up with your weighted GPA. So we do weight those particular courses, all right? And so once you enter all of your entries for each grade, you'll click save and continue kind of per grade level. And you repeat this. And then when you get to your 12th grade, your default typically will be IP for in progress and PL for planned. All right. And if you've already graduated, of course, you can provide your senior courses to us. And then also when I talked about entering in different kind of the scheduling, the system, if you, your term system, if you are taking courses that are only one semester, let's say you have an A for the first semester and then you have another semester there, for that semester that you did not have a grade and you did not take the course, your option will be no. So if you see lower on this, you'll see grade two, no. That will be your option, okay? So that's very important to know, all right? And include all original, all your grades and courses. Even if you've repeated a course, you still wanna repeat list all these courses, especially for courses that you may have received a D or F in, you'll still, you'll also report, you'll still report all of these particular courses. So that's very important. And if you've attended more than one high school, you will do the same process for each particular high school. And finally, for college level courses, this will be the very similar process that you did for high school. So if you're some type of dual enrollment program, this is you after you list your high school courses, then you will list your courses that you've taken at a college and you'll go through the same process listing the courses, the grades earned and also CL for college level and again your college level courses will also receive an additional point. So these will be part of the weighted GPA so something important to know. All right, so I'm going to move move uh, pass it over to my colleague Leticia to tell you more about starting with our testing policy. Thank you, Joa. Hi, everyone. My name is Leticia Garay, and I'm an admissions advisor for the University of California, Davis, or UC Davis for short. Um, and so I want to touch on the new admission changes that we have as a system. So first of all, we have completely eliminated the SAT essay um, and SAT, ACT writing requirement for all of our applicants moving forward. Um, however, we have kind of made some changes for fall of 2021 and fall of 2022 applicants in that we are test optional as a system. 
meaning that students who have already taken these exams or are planning on taking these exams are free to report these scores on the application if they'd like. However, students who do not have these scores or are not planning on taking these exams do not have to take these exams or report scores on the application. So it's very important that we um, give you that option because we wanna make sure that you are comfortable, that you are safe, and that you know that your application will still be fully considered even if you do not provide a score because it, because it is no longer a requirement. Additionally, um, we made some changes to English proficiency requirements. So if you have not attended a US high school for three years or more, then you um, will be able to provide English proficiency through Duolingo. So we do have some um, requirements that can be met that way, um, which is a virtual option for our students. And this will only be for our fall 2021 applicants. So very important change for our students who may be coming with um, work outside of uh, an American high school. Next slide, please. So if you do decide to report either the ACT or the SAT, this is what this part of the application will look like. Um, as I mentioned, it is optional and you do not have to decide whether or not you want to report these exams until you are working on the application on this part or you are ready to submit. Um, so if you do not want to report, you'll go ahead and select no. If you want to report those scores, you'll select yes and you'll input the scores down below. Next slide, please. In regards to the activities and awards, so this really gives us some insight as to who you are as a student, not just your academics. And so you have a few different uh, categories that you can select your extracurricular activity um, to be included under. However, you have um, 20 different slots to fill out essentially between all of these different categories. Um, we do recommend that you do not list your um, awards, extracurriculars, or any of these um, activities in multiple categories. So if you list it in one area, then you want to just leave it at that and not list it in another area to open up that space for you to use it on another experience that you'd like to showcase. Additionally, um, we want to make sure that you know that we really leave these categories open-ended for you to interpret as you see best, uh, best represents you. So, um, you know, whereas there are traditional things like extracurriculars and clubs that you may have participated in the past through your high school, um, we do also open these, um, er this area for um, experience in the home, um, working with siblings, for example, or working a job on the side. Um, and you can go ahead and select these areas to best fit and represent yourself. Next slide, please. So this is an example of what the activities and awards section looks like. Um, you have the opportunity to list the name at the very top, and then you'll go ahead and list the level of recognition and the type of award, um, as well as indicate when you received it. You also have some space and opportunity to really explain what these awards are or these extracurriculars are um, so that we really understand the depth of what you did. We do recommend not using abbreviations because even though we are familiar with a lot of extracurriculars and everything that is out there, we do not know everything that is out there. So it's very important to spell out all the activities and awards that you um, received. Um, and in addition to that, we highly recommend just um, listing the activities and awards that you feel best represent you um, and ones that you think are really showcasing who you are as a student. So um, that concludes this part of the, the um, application. I'll turn it over to Sarah. Thank you, Leticia. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Sarah Koshin. I'm a regional admissions representative at UC Santa Cruz, and I'm going to talk a little bit about comprehensive review. So although each of the UC campuses are a bit different, our applicant pools are different, some of our major offerings are different, and our locations are different, there's one key aspect that we are all on the same page about, and that is comprehensive review, which is basically the UC way of saying that we review your whole application, so a holistic entire review. That means that we're going to 
take a look at all of the aspects that you see on this slide. And it also allows some consideration uh, of an academic or an applicant's achievements, both in school, academic and non-academic, relating to your own personal context and your own personal environment. So you can see those points of consideration here. As a part of our application, we also want to make sure that students have met our minimum requirements to ensure that they will be successful at any UC campus that they ultimately join. So we do have a couple things that we require of students. It will be a breadth of courses that will look similar to what your high school requires of you in order to graduate. And we also do have a GPA requirement for out-of-state or non-resident students of a 3.4 weighted GPA. As Jua mentioned, we're using your sophomore and your junior years to calculate that GPA and the summers that bookend that time. What you should also be aware of, a frequently asked question that we get from non-resident students, is it harder to get into a UC if you are out of state versus in state? The major difference that you're going to see in terms of reviewing applications would be that difference in GPA. Otherwise, students are admitted at a similar rate, whether or not they're in state or out of state. Next slide, I'm going to touch on some of the aspects of our application that make us unique. As it's been mentioned in this presentation, your entire application is self-reported. This becomes very important in helping us understand your context, both academically and personally. At the UCs, we're interested in comparing a student to the opportunities, resources, and context that you have lived. We're not interested in comparing you to your peers or to a student from another school. So remember that, that's, that this application is entirely self-reported and you kind of have to brag about yourself. I know that might be uncomfortable or not something that you are used to, but you're going to have to make sure that we understand you within the context of your settings. We are also interested in gauging a student's success. Some ways that we can that we can see that a student has been successful is by the, the grades that they have earned, the rigor of coursework that they have attempted, and other measurements of academic success. But we also want to see your success within the context of your experiences. So tell us a little bit about your environment, um, your personal, family, or cultural community that will help us better understand you as a student. The next slide will showcase another aspect of our application review that allows us to gather some more information about students, and that is the PIQs or personal insight questions. So personal insight questions distinguish the UCs from other applications you may be submitting in that we provide eight different prompts for students to select four to provide a response to. Those four responses that you give us will be capped at 350 words, so you'll choose four, and make sure that you're formulating a succinct and context-providing type of response. I've heard them referred to as mini essays, and I much prefer the idea that they are interviewing questions. So this is your opportunity to really uh, make sure that you are setting yourself apart or providing context. Maybe you wanna talk about something that's in your application in a greater depth. Essentially, all of the questions and all of the responses are evaluated equally. There is not one question that is better than another. What we're really hoping is that you are utilizing the PIQs to represent yourself authentically, genuinely, and honestly. And finally, the PIQs do complete your application because it is the last thing that you will complete. You can go ahead and advance the next slide so I can touch on additional comments. Two different options for you to fill out additional comments for us to understand you a bit better. The first opportunity will be the additional comments that follow the academic history section. And this is a great opportunity for you to showcase a little bit more intel for us to understand your high school academic context a bit better. So for instance, if you are capped at the number of AP, IB, or honors courses, that's something that we would want to know. Let's say you really were hoping to take a computer science course your senior year, but you weren't able to fit it in your schedule. That's also something important that we might want to know. Uh, if your school is a charter, a magnet school, or has a specific um, affiliation with any realm of academics, these are things that we would want to know about the surroundings that you have experienced in your own academic uh, context. The other opportunity that you will have to share more additional comments would be following the personal insight questions. So if you have a circumstance that is unusual, uh, feel free to share that with us. Anything that you feel would be instrumental in understanding you better as an applicant, please feel free to utilize those additional comments that directly follow the personal insight questions. 
The next slide is going to touch on some of our useful resources. So at any point in the application, if you have a question or you're having trouble navigating, we do have an application help desk that you're welcome to refer to. So they're they are available and willing to help you out with any questions that you have. And you can find some of these links helpful about our application procedures and personal insight questions. As Joe mentioned, our application filing period will be open from November 1st to the 30th, but it is live right now. So if you wanted to, to log in, create an account, and check it out, you're, will, you're more, than, uh, more than able to do so. And you can take a look at some of these PIQ prompts if you want to get an early start. So we're going to transition this presentation a bit and touch on some of our beautiful campuses. I have the pleasure of going first, so I'm extremely excited to introduce you to UC Santa Cruz. So UC Santa Cruz, in short, is pretty different in terms of uh, some of our, our sister campuses in a number of different ways. But I would say in a nutshell, we are a great fit for a student who may be interested in the option to do tier one research with a small liberal arts type of feel located in Northern California. So in the next slide, I'm gonna to touch a little bit more about lo our location because I think it is something that distinguishes us from some other UC campuses. And I think our location is something incredibly attractive. So we are big city adjacent, located in Northern California. We're about an hour and a half south of San Francisco and about 45 minutes outside of Silicon Valley, which does make us the closest UC to Silicon Valley. It's also great for students who are out of state because you have two different options to fly into two different airports. So you can fly into San Jose or you can fly into SFO. I recommend flying into San Francisco because there's some great ramen that you can enjoy before your drive down to Santa Cruz. The Santa Cruz city is a quirky, artistic, cultural type of city with a lot of boutique shopping opportunities and some great ways to engage with the local community. I would say on average, our local community and our campus are exceptionally invested in wellness and being active. So there are plenty of opportunities for you to engage in those types of uh, activities. But when you come back on campus, uh, being big city adjacent, when you finally retire to campus, we are situated on a 2000 acre redwood forest. And if you don't measure an acreage either, because I don't, it's about two and a half central parks of beautiful views, just like the one behind me, rolling hills and wonderful, fantastic uh, viewpoints of the Monterey Bay and the Pacific Ocean. We also do enjoy over 300 sunny days a year with temperate atmospheres at about 70 degrees. So again, our students really do like to be outside and active. If you are a hiker or a biker or you like to camp, or you're into surfing or you wanna try, we might be the right campus for you to have the best of both worlds, both the Redwood Forest and we're only about five minutes from the coast. So great access to beaches too. In the next slide, you'll see a little bit about our academics that we have available to you. I would say this is another aspect of UC Santa Cruz that makes us a little bit different. Upon our founding, we were really supposed to be something different within the UC system, different than Berkeley, different than UCLA, a campus that more was aligned with our European counterparts at Oxford or Cambridge that really adhered to a more liberal arts intimate atmosphere where students get a lot of attention and interaction between their professors and between their peers across areas of academics. So we definitely value the interdisciplinary lens at UC Santa Cruz, and we do have a number of different programs for you to choose from. I would say some of our top popular majors include computer science and computer engineering, business management, economics, psychology, human biology, and then we do have some unique majors that include marine biology, environmental studies, and a new major this year, agroecology, that combines agricultural studies with ecology to really encourage students to, to bring about innovative practices in agriculture. So again, you see the themes here of interdisciplinary study and engaging students across multiple areas of academics. Last thing before I switch the slide is that it's okay if you're undecided as well. At UC Santa Cruz, you'll choose an intended major and then you won't have to declare until the end of your sophomore year. The only caveat is if you are interested in computer science or computer engineering, those two majors at UCSC are capped, so they are impacted majors. You'll just have to let us know that you're interested on your application when we review you. 
In the next slide, you see another way that we kind of structuralize this idea of interdisciplinarity, and these are our residential colleges. They are living and learning communities that are dispersed across our campus. As I mentioned, we are kind of a, a medium to a large size uh, campus in the actual location that we, that we um, are on, but also as well as our student demographics. So we are a bit smaller than some of the other UCs, about 17,500 undergraduate students on campus. And one way that we kind of make that a little bit more intimate is through our residential colleges. We have 10 on campus and each of them uh, offer some similarities in terms of resources and grooming options, right? They all have singles, doubles, triples, an RA and RD, but they are all unique in the areas that they uh, occupy on campus and they each have their own unique architecture, vibe and theme. So it doesn't matter what your major is, you are open to be affiliated with any of our colleges and the themes are broad and meant to encourage students across multiple areas of academics. The themes will be things like uh, representation and power, pursuit of truth in the company of friends, science, society, and technology. So a couple different aspects, I think, that really solidify who we are, uh, and I'll leave you on this note, really are our students. I think the students that we have on campus have a, do a great job of balancing work and life. We have a very serious academic student population that also values wellness and well-roundedness. Uh, so it's not uncommon to see our students, you know, prepping hard for an exam, but also having a great time tossing around a Frisbee outside. I think we're welcoming and uh, extremely diverse, and we hope that you consider UC Santa Cruz too. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to my colleague, Andrea, to tell you a bit about UCI. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everyone. My name is Andrea. I'm with University of California, Irvine. I'm here today to represent one of our Southern California colleges, the only one on the call today, at least. I want to let you know a little bit about Irvine's location because I think this really helps to um, paint a picture in your mind about what our campus is like. When you look at our campus, um, it is built basically like on a park. Um, you'll notice behind me part of the park. This is outside one of our food courts. We're also only about 10 minutes from the beach. We're halfway between Los Angeles and San Diego. It's about 45 minutes to downtown LA, about an hour down to San Diego. But I think when a lot of out-of-state students think of California and think of Southern California. They think in order to get an internship or to get access to jobs, I really need to be in a big city. And that's not necessarily the case. So where Irvine is located is in a very suburban looking area, but it is suburban looking by design. So the, the city of Irvine has one third of all Fortune 500 companies. It has a lot of access to great internships and that kind of thing. But it's also 75 and sunny pretty much year round, 10 minutes from Newport Beach, 10 minutes to Laguna Beach, uh, with great opportunities for outdoor en enjoyment. One of the other things that makes UCI a little different than our uh, peer campuses on the call today and throughout the system is the way we, we've set up our interdisciplinary kind of schools. So instead of having large colleges like a College of Letters and Science, we've broken it down into all these individual schools. So a school of biological science separate than our school of physical science, a school of humanities separate than our school of art. So we've really broken it down into these smaller units. What we're best known for in terms of majors for out-of-state students, I would say, is in our school of biological sciences. And we also have our own medical school, our own hospital. So we offer a lot in the uh, medical field and the pre-med, pre-health field. But we also enjoy just a lot of research on our campus too. So even just straight up biology, um, our physical sciences, anything in those kind of sciences around the health and human body are really uh, well known. We are also the number one school in the uh, cool school in the country by Sierra Club Magazine. This is a nod to our environmental um, understanding and sustainability, not only in our practices on campus, but also in how we are um, maybe educating our students. So we have an environmental science program that students often will graduate with environmental science and environmental policy. So a lot of combinations that you'll see on our campus. One last thing to note before I switch slides is that when you look at all of these schools offered, we have over 85 different majors. We, are, um, we also find that a lot of our students will double major or major and minor in two very different schools. We have streamlined our degree program in order to make this very doable for our students. Uh, so on the next slide, you're gonna see 
how our physical representation shows how we are interdisciplinary and how we've really tied all these disciplines together to make it easy for our students to do those double majors or majors and minors. When you look at our campus, it's built in the perfect one mile circle to all of your academic buildings. Our freshman residence halls are also right off of that circle. So on there, you'll see that we have about just over 30,000 undergraduate students. So we are a very large school. We also have about 6,500 graduate students. Half of those are in our medical school, so they're not physically on our campus. Uh, so that I think helps with the, the feel of it to not feel too large and overwhelming to walk across our campus. So from one side of that circle that you see to the other is about, oh, about a 20 minute walk. And then that inner circle, which is around our beautiful park in the middle, over 14,000 trees, great Wi-Fi as well. So lots of studying and hanging out in the park. That's about a 10 minute walk to walk across that. So it's easy to navigate our campus. It's easy to walk around, but it's not too bad in terms of getting to everything you need and also incorporating different majors into one. On the next slide, you're gonna see a, a visual image of the Irvine area. The Irvine area, as I mentioned, it's, it's very suburban by design, but it is uh, has access to a lot of companies. In the foreground there, you'll find restaurants, you'll find um, a Target, a Trader Joe's, uh, you'll find a, a, a movie theater, and then right in the middle, you'll see that green circular park. That's really, again, the heart of our campus that you just saw. We incorporate a lot of hands-on teaching into our majors. So the majority of our programs either require you to do some sort of field work or an internship. All of our business classes don't meet on Fridays so that students can enjoy business internships in any of the companies you see there, along with thousands of other multinational companies. We are uh, really lucky to have these long-standing partnerships. So students only need to go about 10 minutes away to get these great internships in our backyard. On the next slide, you'll see uh, just kind of one last thing that makes us stand out in the UC system. There's quite a few unique mascots in the UC system. One you see on uh, my colleague Sarah's screen with the banana slug, but we're the anteaters, which is just really fun. So we do this, it's supposed to look like a little anteater and we say zot, 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 and we cheer this at sporting events. We're a D1 school. Um, we also cheer this at esports events. We have one of the top esports programs in the entire country. We cheer this at graduation, we cheer this at concerts, we cheer this at our talent shows that our students really love as well. Over 80% of our first year students live on our campus, so there's this very residential feel on our campus, um, but you also have tons of ways to get involved, over 600 clubs to, to be a part of. I found that our students are very passionate about their academics and about their extracurriculars, so you'll find that echoed kind of throughout the anteater spirit on our campus. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Jua at Berkeley. All right, thank you, Andrea. All right, guys, so I'm gonna head um, up a little further uh, north uh, in the state and learn a little bit more about University of California, Berkeley. Uh, we are the flagship campus for the University of California system. Um, so it did start with Berkeley when we were founded in 1868, and of course expanded out to all of our fabulous campuses. Um, but for Berkeley specifically, I always say I think one of the best parts about our campus hands down is the location. We are about 25 minutes outside of San Francisco. You can see the skyline of the city from our campus. It is quite beautiful. Uh, in addition, we're also about 12 minutes to Oakland. We are about maybe about 50 minutes down to from Silicon Valley, depending on traffic on that day, um, which is clearly a very big draw for a lot of students to take advantage of what Silicon Valley has to offer. Um, in addition, we're about 45 minutes from Napa Valley and we're about an hour and a half or so to Sacramento, the state capital. So you are very centrally located near a lot of resources, whether it be for internships, research, job opportunities, and then also entertainment. Um, in addition, great food if you're a foodie. So I'm a firm believer in the balance. So you have a lot at your fingertips. In addition, Berkeley itself, mid-paced college town, um, very eclectic, very creative vibe, a lot of theaters and cafes and restaurants. Um, so it's a really wonderful hybrid of pace between Berkeley, the town itself, and then the larger cities that are nearby. And students really take full advantage. And I always think that's one of the major pluses about our particular campus's location. And then really what makes UC Berkeley one of the best public schools literally in the world, hands down primarily are the students. They are truly the heartbeat of our campus. You guys come in every single year, I think blow our minds as an administration, I think with your intellectual curiosity and your commitment to service, your thinking outside the box and really make us who we are. We have over 30,000 under 
undergraduate students. We have over 11,000 graduate level students encompassing all 50 states, US territories, and about 90 different countries. So it's a very diverse community. It's a very global community that you can really, that you take advantage of being one of, on our, in part of our student population. If you kind of break those numbers down a little bit more, you're looking at about 18 to one student to faculty ratio. So you're looking at a good 70% of your classes being between 30 to 32 students. Um, so we keep it very manageable. Though it's a large student population, always tell students, don't let that intimidate you. It shrinks pretty quickly. You have access to faculty. They have mandatory office hours. We have a residential program where some of them live in dorms with their families, so you can engage with them in that way. We also have what we call freshman and sophomore seminars. We're able to engage with faculty throughout the academic year based on some type of intellectual theme or research throughout the year. And so that's another way that you can engage with them in a more intimate setting. So again, you have the access to resource and faculty that you need on our campus, but it's also large enough to get lost in when you need to. So that's a good mixture, all right? Now for us, we offer a lot of different opportunities. I'll start with just the undergraduate programs. We have between our undergrad and graduate programs over 300 different programs. On the undergraduate division, there's it's split between five colleges and one school. So College of Letters and Science, that's our largest college. It has about 75% of our undergraduate students. It covers a wide array of different majors, including our um, arts and humanities. So that's your art, music, English. Your biological sciences like biochemistry, integrative biology, molecular cellular biology, your physical sciences and mathematics like statistics, math physics, your social sciences like um, political science, economics, uh, in addition to uh, interdisciplinary study majors like American studies, gender studies, you can create your own major, so you have a lot of options. But we also have our College of Chemistry, one of the only colleges in the nation committed to this discipline of chemistry, one of our smaller colleges, three majors, chemistry, chemical biology, and chemical engineering. And for a quick fun fact, Berkeley's added about 16 elements to the periodic table. So that's definitely a strong suit for us. Um, College of Engineering, this is one of the best programs in the nation, and it remains our most competitive program to be admitted to as an incoming freshman. Very innovative, very hands-on, very broad range of majors from energy engineering to civil to mechanical. Environmental design, this is where you have architecture, urban planning, great studio space, wonderful advising team. Rouser College of Natural Resources, this has a very special history. It's the oldest college in the UC system, uh, oldest major being forestry. Um, so it's our green college. So if you're thinking of something in environmental sciences or even health science, it's a great option. Uh, maybe um, of microbial biology or even nutritional sciences. And then finally, Berkeley Haas. This is our second oldest business school in the US, one of the top ranked one major business administration. We have a lot of more innovative programs, dual degree programs where you're working to earn two degrees in four years. So we have a MET, Management Entrepreneurship and Technology Program, which is between the School of Business and our College of Engineering. We have a Business Plus Biology dual degree program. We also have programs that are more global. So we have a dual degree program with Sciences Po in France, where you spend two years in France, last year at Berkeley, and a very similar program with the University of Hong Kong. So you guys have a lot of options. And then student life equally as vibrant as you see over 1,200 student groups and organizations, from academic to professional to cultural. Um, we have Greek life, a lot to be involved in on our campus. One place to find community is also through the residence hall activities, the housing theme programs to me are one of the best places to find community on our campus. We have different ones that target different communities. So for instance, we have a program for African American students, we have one for our Native American students, we have one for students who are part of the LGBTQIA plus community, our Unity House, we have one for young women in the STEM field. So a lot of options for even there. Athletics, we are, you know, us Cal, we are Division One. Um, we are part of the Pac-12 conference, 30 different varsity teams, club sports, and intramural sports. So again, you have a lot of options on our campus. So it's a really balanced experience coming to UC Berkeley um, that really makes it a very unique place that I think students value. And I hope you all decide to kind of check us out and see if we may be a good fit for you. And I'm going to shift it over to my colleague, Leticia, to tell you about UC Davis. Thank you, Joa. So I'm representing UC Davis, still in Northern California. Next slide, please. And so just to give you a little bit of history, um, University of California Davis is actually the second oldest UC campus. We were UC Berkeley's university research farm back in the day before we became our own campus. And so um, we've really expanded beyond that to include over 100 different majors, but still we have some really high rankings in our agriculture and environmental sciences um, with being the third greenest university in the nation, 
oh sorry in the world and also just being um like number one in the nation for our agricultural economics program for example but um much like all of our colleagues i mean location is always going to be very important especially in the uc system because we have so many kind of overlapping resources but we also have different personalities and that location really will come to speak about that personality for us, our students love to take advantage of the fact that they are near the state capital about 20 minutes away and that the international airport is right there. So it makes it easy to be able to travel, to study abroad, to go back home for the holidays if you're coming from the East Coast. Um, but also being able to go to Lake Tahoe two hours away and having that camping and hiking trip with some friends on the weekend and make it back in time for Monday morning classes. In Sacramento, we also have our medical school, which is open for our students to do um, not just research, but also just internships with prof professors and doctors um, in the medical institution there. And if you want some hands-on learning, we do have our uh, Bodega Marine Laboratory on the other coast or on the other side of California, um, where students are actually able to live at the laboratory for about uh, 10 weeks, which is the quarter there, and study biology in much smaller class sizes. We're about an hour and a half away from San Francisco. Um, Napa Valley is nearby, and Yosemite is also one of our favorite locations um, for students to visit. Next slide, please. So one thing that our students love about our campus is that we are a college town. So 50% of Davis is compromised of students. So everything really is catering towards the student experience and student life in our community, um, both on campus and outside of campus it, are really trying to make sure that students are safe, that students feel um, secure in their development, not just as adults, but also as professionals going out and graduating. Um, we have a farmer's market that happens on our university um, and on our uh, Central Park in the downtown area. Our students love to take advantage and have a quick boba break in between classes um, or just hop on the buses um, to go to one of the other restaurants around downtown um, and still come back in class to make it um, back in time. So college town, I mean, it really just makes you feel safe as a student there. Make sure that you are able to kind of change up your daily schedule without having to go out of your way to do so. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we have over 100 different majors and we divide them by four different colleges. Um, we have that ranking in agriculture, economics and policy, but we also have first in the nation for our vet sciences and animal programs, which is what we're really well known um, for across the nation. Um, however, you'll find that some of our most popular majors include psychology, biology and computer science, as well as economics. So there really is a lot to do on our campus. A lot of our students double major um, and have even triple majored as well as tacked on the minor. So there's a lot of opportunity to um, have different interests across the board and be able to participate in um, whatever you see best fits you. Next slide, please. So I do wanna end on just our extracurricular activities. So we are a division one sports um, university as well. Um, in the most recent years, we've had our basketball team make it to the conferences and our uh, football team has also won the, the, the conference uh, last year. So we're up and coming. Um, our students are really good sports though, in that they just love attending and having that community from going to a game with students um, and friends of their own. Um, and we have over a hundred different clubs and organizations on campus. Um, pre-professional as well as um, fun clubs like Harry Potter or the Environmental Club. Um, we have a question writing for students who are interested in seeing how that works, um, as well as a horse barn. Um, we are the only UC campus to have a horse barn on our campus for students who are interested in working with animals, not necessarily just being pre-vet. Um, and, you know, I did include this NASA photo here just because a fun fact is that for our aerospace engineering major, um, we do have a former astronaut who is also UC Davis alum, and he actually took a team of mostly sophomores um, to Virginia back in 2019 to compete in this NASA competition where we placed second place. Um, so that was a really fun 
opportunity for a lot of our younger students who, you know, I definitely encourage taking advantage of the fact that we are a research institution, um, not just Davis, but across the system. So if you are interested in doing research, you'll find plenty of opportunities to get involved in, whether it's for engineering or even arts and humanities, which at our campus, we have a specific conference for. Um, so that's a really quick thing about UC Davis. Um, I guess at this point in time, we'll see if we have any questions since we have a minute to spare. And I didn't see any questions based on what we already answered, but I don't know what, what the questions that were asked, do you all think there's something, one of those that we can just, you think that's important for everyone to know that we can just answer, I'm not sure. And Sarah and Andrew, Sarah, you may have a better grasp of maybe what was uh, asked of us. What do you think? You know, there was a good question about if something is abbreviated on your transcript, uh, should you copy it exactly? And I do think that this brings up another question that maybe wasn't asked, but is a frequently asked question, which is if you are a non-resident student and you have an honors course, even if it isn't technically a UC approved honors course, we do want you to denote the fact that it is honors so that we have some sense of what type of rigor you were taking. So whether you do it in uh, the actual course name or whether you are marking it as a UC honors course, please do let us know. Uh, we do know that there is that is sometimes confusing when you are an out-of-state student. And I guess that may be we're close to our time. So I just want to say <laughs> for all of us, I'll say for all of us, thank you all so much for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. We hope you learned a little bit more about the UC system. And we all hope to see some of your applications and you see you know, emails with more questions. Thank you. Yes, a big thank you to all of our panelists for their presentation today. And uh, just a quick closing note of once you close out your Zoom for our participants, there will be a little survey that we're we'll asking you to complete just so we can see how we did and how we can improve. And as a reminder, recordings are available as well as signups for more sessions at strivescan.com slash Virginia. So a big round of thank yous again to everybody and have a great rest of your days. Bye folks. <laughs>